Hello, friends and fellow bibliophiles and zombie lovers. Welcome back to Cat's Novel Adventures. Today, I am wrapping up a major bookish adventure, Zombiethon. <laughs> Zombiethon was a month-long read-a-thon, watch-a-thon in celebration of Zombie Awareness Month, and I had a wonderful month. Zombiethon exceeded all of my expectations. So I want to mention that I did read some short stories for Zombiethon as well as part of Horror Mayhem, which also took place in May. I read five short stories from Zombies, A Compendium of the Living Dead, edited by Otto Penzler. I did a whole separate video on the short stories, what they were about, as well as my thoughts on them. The stories that I read were by Stephen King, Henry S. Whitehead, Edgar Allan Poe, H.P. Lovecraft, and Robert McCammon. I will leave a link in the description box below in case you want to check it out. Let's talk about the zombie books first. Prompt number one was Zombies Can Be Zany, so read a humorous zombie book, and I chose Kate Walden directs Night of the Zombie Chickens by Julie Matta. This was a middle grade book and it is about a young girl named Kate. She and her family move out to the country so her mom can raise organic chickens. She wants to be a filmmaker, even though she's only in the seventh grade, and decides that she is going to film a zombie movie. So it's more about the angst of being a junior high student and what happens when your friends don't share the same vision, I guess, uh, would be the best way to put it. But she and her best friend Alyssa are making this movie and Alyssa befriends the popular girl at school. And because of that, it causes some issues between Alyssa and Kate and Kate decides to take revenge in her dramatic way. I really enjoyed this. I gave it four stars. I was expecting a little more zombie action, so that was just me going in with some expectations of more zombie shenanigans, I guess. But it all centers around a zombie movie that's being made. But very heartfelt, a wonderful examination of junior high friendship. Prompt number two was zombies can be open-minded. So read a zombie story that has romantic vibes. I went ahead and read Pride and Prejudice and the Zombies, Dreadfully Ever After by Steve Hawkinsmith. This is the sequel to Pride, Prejudice, and Zombies. It was fantastic. I really enjoyed it. It was a five-star read for me. It follows Elizabeth Bennet and Mr. Darcy about four years after they get hitched. I don't want to go into a lot of details because it is the sequel. However, I will say that Mr. Darcy encounters a dreadful, an unmentionable, and something happens that jeopardizes their marriage. And Elizabeth has to go on this really odd kind of quest in order to help her husband and live happily ever after. I really loved it. I love the style of writing. It just picks up in that literary prose, like Pride and Prejudice. I just love this entire series. So if you have not checked out the Pride and Prejudice and Zombie series, I would highly recommend it. Start with Pride and Prejudice, then read Dawn of the Dreadfuls, which is the prequel, and then wrap it up with a nice little bow with his Pride, Prejudice, and Zombies dreadfully ever after. Prompt number three was zombies can be moody. So read a middle grade zombie story. And I went with another sequel and that is Dead City Blue Moon by James Ponty. It was fantastic. A five star read for me. Love it very much. Can't go into major details about it because it is a sequel. However, I will say it follows Molly Bigelow, who is a young girl part of a secretive team called the Omegas, and their job is to keep the zombies in New York City 
in line, basically. This takes her on more adventures. The first book ends with a cliffhanger. Discoveries are made, some pretty shocking, at least for Molly in any case. But we also learn about who's in charge in the underground zombie world. Prompt number four was zombies can be brainy. Therefore, read an article, essay, or nonfiction book about zombies. I really wanted to read an essay out of Zombie Theory, which is edited by Sarah Juliet Loro. Unfortunately, I did not get to one. I did read an article off of the Zombie Research Society website and had a chat about this article with Amy of Amy Noel Reads on our first live chat of Zombiethon. I'll leave a link in the description box below with our thoughts on that article. It was called Do Zombies Feel Pain? Exploring Sensory Neuropathy by Luke W. Boyd. I found it fascinating. It really went into like the science behind whether or not we think zombies really could feel pain. Prompt number five is zombies can be imaginative. So read a comic book, graphic novel, manga, or picture book about zombies and I chose Brains, Not Just a Zombie Snack by Stacy McAnulty and this was fantastic. I loved it. It was a five-star read for me. It's all about your brain, and it is told by this very cute, friendly zombie girl who assures you that she is not after your brain. I loved it because it told you all about the different parts of your brain. It compared your brain to other animals' brains. I mean, just look how cool that is. Very, very, very cool, I think. It also talks about how your brain receives messages from your five senses. It talks about how your neurons are born and how they can send thousands of messages to other neurons and creating pathways. And then there are some facts at the back of the book. And one of them I was extremely surprised by because I had no idea that when Albert Einstein died, his brain was stolen by Dr. Thomas Harvey and was cut up so that it could be studied. Fascinating, just never knew that. But I would highly recommend this picture book. It's a great for children of all ages. I personally could see myself reading this to students anywhere from like second, third, fourth grade, even higher than that because it's just a fun way to learn a scientific concept. Prompt number six was zombies can be enterprising. So read a zombie book that made it to the little or big screen. And I chose to read The Girl with All the Gifts by M.R. Carey. I had seen the movie a couple of years ago for Zombie Awareness Month, and it was time for me to read the book. I loved it. I think this book is awesome. It is a slow burn. It really is a book with lots of great character development. It's about the characters. It's about their survival in this post-apocalyptic world. What I loved about this book is that it's a different take on how humans are turned into zombies. It follows a young girl named Melanie. Melanie is what I would call a zombie hybrid. She is at the very beginning of the story at a military base along with some other children and they attend classes but there's something nefarious going on at this military base. Something really tragic happens one day and she along with a handful of other people, a scientist, a soldier, Melanie's teacher, they all escape the military base and then they're out on their own in this very desolate environment. I really loved it. Loved it, loved it, loved it. I just couldn't even really believe the ending and what is decided at the end and who gets to decide. But I really did love how the characters change from beginning to end. In fact, Sergeant Parks is not one of my favorites at the very beginning of the story, but by the end, I really grew to love him and just 
love this book. So I would highly recommend it for anyone who would like to try a different take on the zombie subgenre as far as reading goes. Prompt number seven was zombies can be spontaneous. So this was our mood read and I chose Night of the Living Trekkies by Kevin David Anderson and Sam Stahl. This was also our group read for Zombiethon and oh my goodness, this book was amazing. I'm telling you, big surprise, I loved it. Five star read for me. I just very surprised that I loved it so much. I knew it was going to be a good time, but I just didn't realize how much of a good time it was going to be to read it. It follows Jim Pike, who is working at a hotel in Houston. He is an ex-soldier from the Army. He served two tours in Afghanistan, and he has some trauma from that experience. And so now he's just living life. He ha really doesn't want any responsibility. And he is at the hotel on the weekend that they are hosting a Star Trek convention. Well, there are something else that's attending that convention besides all the cosplayers. And that is a strange virus. That virus is turning the convention goers as well as the employees into zombies and so the stakes are high and jim has to kick it in gear and he has to remember his love for star trek and that is what helps him and a handful of people try to survive this zombie outbreak that's happening so many twists and turns lots of references to star trek if you like comic cons like I do, and you love zombies, like I do, you will love this book. You do not have to be a zombie, I'm sorry, you do not have to be a Star Trek fan in order to enjoy this book. If anything, it's making me wanna go out and you know watch some more Star Trek because it just seems like a lot of fun. Not to say that I don't have any reference with Star Trek, but just not as much as these participants. But loved it, loved it, loved it, and so excited that this was chosen for the group read and that so many people enjoyed reading it. As you can see, my reading experience for Zombiethon was stellar. I had such a great time. I will say my only disappointment was that I did not get to read any of the essays from Zombie Theory edited by Sarah Juliet Loro. However, I am gonna crack this baby open before my next Zombie Awareness Month because I need to read some of these essays. I was really looking forward to reading something out of this book. I knew I wasn't gonna read the whole book. I was hoping at least for one essay. Now, as far as biggest surprises, that was Night of the Living Trekkies by Kevin David Anderson and Sam Stahl. And I wanna say that the icing on the cake was that Kevin David Anderson, he joined my Discord. And he also attended our live chat that Kelsey and I had on May 30th. So please check that out. I will leave a link for that chat as well. It will have spoilers, but it was such a good time. And I was so excited that Kevin David Anderson was able to attend the chat for a little bit. It was just really fun interacting with him. And I look forward to reading more of his stories in the future. Now let's talk about the movies that I watched for Zombiethon. I think I watched 12 of them, and I had prompts for these as well. Zombies can be zestful, so you are to watch an animated movie or an animated series that had to do with zombies. I actually watched two. I watched Zombilinium, which was a zombie animated film. It was pretty good. It had a really good storyline to it, and I enjoyed it. I gave it a three. I also watched Resident Evil Infinite Darkness. This was an animated TV series that only one season, four episodes, really gritty story, loved the action in it, was very surprised with how well it was done, and I gave it four stars. Zombies Can Be Original, and this was a found footage movie. I went with Wreck and I was pleasantly surprised with it. I actually liked it. The only thing was that the reporter was annoying. It is also a foreign film. It's fast paced and has a lot of action in it. And I will say the ending is disturbing. It was a 3.5 for me. 
As far as memorable, this was where you would watch a movie that was based on a book. This is the one that I was supposed to be watching Extinction for, and I did not. So that's the only prompt that I did not complete. <laughs> Zombies Can Be Brave, and this was your mood watch. And this is where a lot of my movies took place. I watched Brain Dead, uh, directed by Peter Jackson. I gave it a two. I was not thrilled by it. It started off really well. I liked the premise and how the zombie epidemic started, but then it got to be like really over the top and silly, and it just looked like people used a gajillion gallons of blood just to make this the bloodiest movie ever. So very disappointed. Mayhem with Steven Yun. I gave that a three. It is not really a zombie movie that we think of where the zombies are after you and flesh eating. It was more like the people are zombies working in the corporate world and they kind of go crazy. I don't know. It was just different. Then I watched Wormwood, Road of the Dead. This was a two for me. It was action packed and kind of cool, but I don't know. It just wasn't my main jam. And then Abraham Lincoln versus zombies. That was a one. There were some good kills and the zombies look kind of cool here and there, but it was cheesy. The acting was terrible. Zombies can also be international. And this is where you would watch a foreign film about zombies. And the movie I chose was a Danish film called What We Become. I gave it a one star. I didn't like it. The people were dumb. I just didn't care for it at all. There were some zombie kills that were pretty cool, but overall, bleh, thumbs down for that one. Uh, Wreck, as well as One Cut of the Dead, could also be considered for this prompt as well. For episodic, for zombies being episodic, this is for you to watch an episode of a TV series. I was continuing with Fear the Walking Dead. I was going back to season seven, which I did not get to see. I watched two episodes, episode one and two, and have also, since May has ended, I have also watched episode three. Really loving it, just kind of worried about my group because there is some hostility um, between Morgan and Strand. I don't know where that's gonna lead to, but just worried about my group in general. Zombies can be silly. This is the last prompt and it was to watch a zombie comedy and I chose One Cut of the Dead. Oh my goodness, it was so much fun and I love the whole concept of a zombie movie within a zombie movie. I gave it four stars, really enjoyed it. We also attended some watch parties on my Discord. We saw Little Monsters, which was a rewatch for me. I gave it a four, just like I gave it a four the first time. And mainly the reason it gets a four is because of the actor Josh Gad. I cannot stand him. He's got such a crude mouth. I just don't care for his humor. Then uh, we had Hard Rock Zombies, which was terrible, terrible. Worst zombie movie I have ever seen. I gave it a half star. And the only reason I gave it a half star is because the zombie band actually played a song. But again, the song was atrocious and terrible and they played it multiple times. And there's this dancing chick in there and you don't even see zombies for like 50 minutes into the film unless you count the mosquito fly or the spider. I don't know, very weird. It was like the director was making a film well, five different films into one film. Very strange. Just perfect movie to watch with a group of people because that's how bad it was. And the last one was Night of the Comet, which I had not seen in a million years. It's from the 80s. I gave it a three. It was a good time. As far as my movies go, my biggest disappointments was Brain Dead by Peter Jackson. As I mentioned, it just wasn't my cup of tea. I was also disappointed with Mayhem. I just, I don't know. I was expecting something more. I was expecting more zombies, I guess. But my biggest surprise was the Resident Evil TV series, Resident Evil Infinite Darkness, as well as One Cut of the Dead. I just thought it was awesome. Now I will say, and I didn't mention this at the beginning, I always watch Shaun of the Dead, and this year I kicked off Zombiethon and Zombie Awareness Month with watching Shaun of the Dead. All I can say, folks, is if you have not seen Shaun of the Dead, I highly recommend it because it is awesome, and I love it. Well, that is a wrap on Zombiethon and everything that I watched 
and I read all throughout the month of May. I had such a great time and I want to thank everyone who participated. I want to thank everyone who helped me out with the watch parties. That's you, Kelly, from Kelly Hooked on Books and Kelsey of Slime and Slashers. I want to thank everyone that helped me with the live chats and that's you, Amy, of Amy Noel Reads. That's you, Linda, of Linda, the Gamer Gal and you, Katrina of Katrina Brown. I loved this month and I love zombies and I'm so happy that so many people participated. It really made my month so special, so much more special than if I was just doing Zombie Awareness Month by myself. Did you participate in Zombiethon? What was your favorite part about it? I love you guys and I appreciate y'all watching. But you know what to do. In the meantime, stay amazing and be adventurous.